it, if I can make it, you know, universalism, uh, and, and we can all do that, but you know, Jesus warned us about this, that we would want this more universal kind of salvation where it doesn't matter what you, path you're on as long as you're sincere. He warned us about it. What did he say? How big is the path that leads to heaven? There. How big is the path that leads to destruction? Why? It's not the way that God desires for it to be. What does the scripture say about God desiring how many people to be saved? Oh. So, why is it happening that way? Then? Because you have been granted a free will. No, not free will. Free will. What is that about? Got a few grants from them. You have to choose God because you want Him. He gives you the opportunity. And you respond. Now I have to tell you, He knows what your response is going to be before you respond. He can't help it. He's God. But, He is going to allow many of the people in this room who choose to go on and on and on in life just playing the religious game, come to church, put their hat to God, do whatever. He's going to let you do that even though He's called you and drawn you and shown you His salvation time and time again and He's called you to respond to surrender your heart and life to Him fully. He's giving you that free will. Why? You can't make somebody love you. You can try to deceive someone into loving you. You can try to buy someone into loving you. You can try to force someone into loving you. But the reality is, is if I know who you are and you know who I am, and I come to you just to be accepted for who I am, and you the same, we can love and care for each other, and we can respond to each other. God who made me, God who made me, is saying that if you will respond to Him today, He will save you and make you a child of God. You will be born again and your life will be changed forever because He suffered. He rose on the third day. And He is the source of forgiveness and salvation. Luke didn't tell us everything about this experience. He wanted to share some more when he gave us the book of Acts. But before we look at a couple of passages, we can back that up. You remember that funny looking font, that word joy, earlier in the text when uh, they realized that that was really Jesus and they, they had joy? And now... They can't see Jesus anymore and he's gone. And yet somehow or another we went from joy to what? Great joy. Why? I think they were beginning to catch on. That even though physically they weren't going to see Jesus anymore, he was going to be with them all the time. Had they had Jesus with them 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, all of the time in the past? No. No. They had to go somewhere else. And Jesus was there. Jesus sent them to town to go and get the room ready for the Lord's Supper or whatever happened. And they were not in His presence anymore. And yet, now they're beginning to understand that He's going to be with them. All of them. Matthew chapter 28. And so they can be parted from Him and yet have great joy. What does that say to you today? What difference does it make in your life? You too, without visibly being able to see Jesus, can have great joy if you live your life with the full awareness of His presence. 
with him. He shows his deity. He shows his humanity in these passages. Let's look at a little bit more at what happens that Luke tells us. Also Luke, writer of the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 6. So when they come together, they ask him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Is this now when you're going to do all the big things that we see unfulfilled in Scripture that are going to happen someday? And they were justified to know, was Jesus going to do that unfulfilled prophecy now? His response is, it's not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father is fixed by His own authority. Folks, the things that are going to happen, yet fulfilled in prophecy, they're going to happen because God says so. It's His authority. He has authority to make those things happen, and He is deciding the times and the seasons for it. So don't wonder if those prophecies are going to be fulfilled. Understand that we don't know the times or seasons for everything, but God, by His own authority, will bring it to pass. But Jesus said that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be. Not you ought to be. You will be. This is something that, they, that we need to understand, that is, if we're born again children of God, we are not supposed to maybe be a witness or see if we can learn something to try to be a witness. We are a witness. We either are good witnesses or we're not so good witnesses for the things that the Lord has done. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria. And what does Luke make sure gets in there? To the ends of the earth. It's a Gentile message. Two, verse 9, when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up. It's the same experience that he's talking about at the end of Luke. He's talking about at the beginning of Acts. He was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. Notice you can jump down. And these two men standing there in white robes, gee, I wonder what those were, say... He will come again the same way you saw him go. How is Jesus coming? Well, he's coming in the clouds. The scripture says like lightning. He's coming. We're warned by Jesus. Do not be deceived. If somebody says he's in the desert. If somebody says he's at a conference center in Frisco. If somebody says he's wherever he is. Ah, wrong answer. You're going to know he's coming in the clouds. It's going to be obvious for the world to see. So as they were gazing into heaven as he went, these two witnesses, these two men, stood by in white robes and said, In Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who has taken up from you into heaven, will come again. He's coming back, y'all. He's coming back. What will he find me doing? What will he find you doing? When he comes. These are the things that we need to understand. Will we be living our lives for ourselves? Will we just be trying to get by? Or will we be experiencing God fully aware of what he's doing around us and participating in that? Well, now which one I'd rather be doing when he comes. Notice it also says, this is Jesus. Well, we got a lot of Jesuses out there today, don't we? We got Jesuses that are homosexuals. We got Jesuses that are uh, are anti-Jew, pro-Palestinian. We got all kinds of Jesuses out there, false Christ of every kind. But the one that's coming back still stands for exactly the same thing he stood for when he left. So if you're starting to change up some of his message or trying to understand it in a new way, <laughs> I don't think he's going to be real happy about that when he shows back. See, the one that's coming is the one that left. It's the one that talked about marriage, and when he described marriage, he described something that was between one man and one woman for life. The only exception to that that he listed 
was if one spouse was unfaithful and broke the covenant. They didn't say that they had to get a divorce even because of that. There could be forgiveness and restoration. So this Jesus is the same one. This is the Jesus that's coming back. Oh, does he love us and forgive us? Does he help us through difficult times? Does, oh, of course he, he He always did, even here. You remember when he, he forgave uh, the woman caught in adultery? Uh, when he forgave uh, women that were in, caught up in prostitution? When he forgave or willing to forgive men who were the very men who were going to kill him, he was prepared to forgive them and they wouldn't receive him. He's always ready to help us when we're ready to respond to be changed. And when we tell him, no, I want what you have to that's the dessert on the buffet, but I don't want you to change my life. You don't get Jesus on your terms. This is the Jesus that's coming back. This Jesus. Notice also as you look at that passage. It was taken up to you, from you, into heaven. I think for a lot of us, we get tired with some of the experiences of life, grow weary in well-doing, trying to serve the Lord faithfully, uh, sometimes possibly considered underappreciated, you know, uh, and sometimes it feels that way even if it's not true. But folks, this is not the end. And this is not really the place of reward. You know, if I was going to like reward people today, I would, I would reward the people who are in, singing in the children's <coughs> choir who are about to go into the youth haven't given up on the children in the children's choir. I would reward them for hanging in there. I would reward their workers for being able to work with them and to help. I would reward, and I can come up with the, the names of teachers and directors and, and all of these committee folks and things of that sort. But you know, I would miss somebody. I would miss somebody. The Lord's not going to miss Anyone. You see, he went to heaven. And if I remember what the scripture says, he said, he told his disciples, I am going to prepare a place for And if I prepare a place for you, I am going to return and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be awesome. So hang in there. Because it's not over until we're face to face with Jesus. So let's look at some of these amazing promises that we've seen in this text. And, and even in Luke, as you look through that list, there are some things that we count on each and every day of the week. If you're not counting on these things, you're missing out on something that God has provided. That He helps you understand Scripture. That He is our salvation. That He's always looking to bless us. That we would have great joy knowing that He is alive. And that we can worship Him. That we receive the Holy Spirit when we're born again. That He has honored us to be witnesses to His life with our own life. That He's going to return the same way that He left. We know what to expect. He hasn't left us in the dark. We know what's going to happen in it. And I'm so glad that Luke responded to the work of God to receive this message and to God breathe to put this message down that it might be shared with us in this generation. Because the gospel is not just for certain people. You're a person and you're here today and you say, but you don't know what I've done. You don't know how I've lived. There's no way that God can forgive me. I just want to tell you, that is a lack of hell. And the devil wants you to continue to believe that so that you can leave this life and go into eternity 
without receiving the greatest gift that has ever been given. And that is salvation and forgiveness through the grace of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we ask that you would help us to respond to your love now and not to our fears or concerns about the people around us or the things that the enemy is trying to speak into our minds right now to keep us stuck where we are. Or Jesus, for a person who has not yet responded to be born again, that they would turn their thoughts toward you right now and they would say, yes, Jesus, I believe that you lived a sinless life and that you suffered for me. That you died on the cross and that you raised from the dead. Your spirit is confirming that truth in my heart right now. Lord Jesus, I receive you. I want you to come into my life and forgive me and make me a child of God. And I thank you that that is your desire to make me your own. Lord, for a person who's also now praying that belongs to you and yet there's some struggle in their life and they're they're bringing this before you again. Lord, we lift up this concern and we pray that you would give us the stronger faith to trust that you are in fact in heaven right now crying out blessings on our behalf. And that even the struggle that we're going through, even the challenge that we face, is something that you're using to make us stronger and to prepare us for the days ahead. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. And we worship you today. Lord, however many decisions, however many other struggles, how other, what other choices that need to be made, we bring those things before you. We thank you that you come into our midst unexpectedly.